Mid stormy gales of winter, mid oceans crashing raw, ships were wrecked and broken, a chain length from the shore. A special boat was needed for saving lives at sea. Would have a great head shared the task. The Zeppelin came to be. Come along, great boys, come along. Oh, great boys, the Zeppelin lies awaiting on the shore. Bring the carriage horses to launch her into hell. The Zetland Lifeboat, the saviour of hundreds of lives in the Sea of Redcar in the northeast of England. Today we will see why the history of this lifeboat is so important to the town of Redcar and why the people of Redcar care for it so much. We will see what it means to my family as we meet my granddad as he gives us an insight of Redcar's biggest piece of history. We will also see the Zetland return to its home after being refurbished and let you be a part of the museum's open day. Finally, we will give you a short insight of the museum as it reopens to the general public. Right, here we are the last day of the project of the conservation of the Zetland lifeboat in the Dawson's yard. Um, we've got the cover on. We're just waiting for the timing now to take it back down to Redcar Seafront because we've told everybody we're going to be there at about 11 o'clock and all being well. That's when we'll get there. Hopefully there'll be plenty of people down there. Nice sunny day. Um, we're going to put on the seafront for a, about an hour so people can see it, uh, unveil it obviously, and uh, hopefully it's a good day.
Representatives who are here today, we are extremely grateful for the help we have received from you this year and in previous years. One of the people who deserves a massive thank you is Tony Young, who took on this daunting task with a brief that we wanted to see. Thank you. He, he took on this daunting task with a brief that we wanted to keep as much as the, the original board as possible. And without fail, with his very small band of merry men, Paul and Garth, he has done exactly that. He has only replaced the bits that absolutely needed to, and they have worked wonders to achieve what we see in front of us today. And I also can't move on without a mention, a special mention for Fred, who started this journey. He had a vision to restore the Zetland and seeing the need, so if we didn't do something, she would be gone forever, just rotting away in this building. <laughs> After a lot of false hopes, promises and disappointments, we have finally achieved where we are today. So thank you very much. Sorry, I'm nearly there. Just a big thank you to my committee. And we've worked together now in all our different ways to get where we are today. So I do thank you on a personal level and on behalf of the museum, I thank you all. As you can see, we've had a new floor put down and a new shop erected. So I hope our volunteers and visitors will all enjoy. So many thanks to you all for coming on this freezing cold morning and in a few minutes I will hand you over to Lord Zetland for a few words. Then Master Fisherman's Choir will be singing a few shanties and then by all means go upstairs, hot cup of tea and some sandwiches for you. I hope we have a very successful year. Thank you all to the volunteers. We could not function without you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for the for the Zetland lifeboat today and you've seen you've seen how wonderful she looks and I've met Tony Young now who's been in charge of this restoring and he's, well, he's done a fantastic job and I, I'm sure he's around somewhere where's Tony anyway I'm sure he, anyway he's here well, he helped helped he says by his friend called Paul and they've done between them an amazing job on this lifeboat um, now you may think because it's a wonderful day um, outside, it was it's all plain sailing for the for the Zetland lifeboat, but it wasn't. I can imagine they went out in all weathers. Um, this picture behind me actually describes it very well. You can see how big the waves were, and you can imagine um, these the crew going out in the middle of the night um, by the nature of it when there was when there was a, a stricken ship somewhere. And you will know that um, she saved well over 500 lives in her in her 80 years of existence. Are we still there? Yes. Yeah, I'm still there. Um, so really all I'm here to do is to say how proud I am to be bearer of the name of the Zetland because it means a huge amount to me that my family was involved all those years ago. And um, I just hope that the um, Zetland will be present with us now for many, many more years to come. I know, I know she will, in fact. Um, also, I'd just like to echo what Jeanette was saying in thanking all the volunteers. It's all volunteers. There's nobody paid here. It's all volunteers. And I think you know who you are, and you've done a wonderful job, and you are doing a wonderful job. Um, and we all hope that um, Bazetna will be here for probably another two generations at least. So thank you very much. All right. My name's Philip Borgel. I'm the treasurer here at the Zetlin Lifeboat Museum. I first came here in 2012 when I did a painting of the Zetland lifeboat, which we call Hard on the Blue. My role, as I say, a treasurer here is to look after the finances of this uh, this museum and make sure that it runs. I know it's, it's for a voluntary basis, but we do get donations, so it's my responsibility responsibility to make sure that the donations that we get are used in a correct and proper manner to actually sustain the the running of the museum.
Hello, I'm uh, the curator at the Lifeboat Museum. Um, we've just this second put the boat back to bed. This has been away for the conservation work, which we started at the beginning of the year. It took a long time, uh, but we got there with a bit of patience and some good help from everybody concerned. Do you have any ancestry within the lifeboat? Yeah, my great 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 granddad, he was a coxswain of this boat, the Zetland, uh, and my granddad also worked for the RNLI, he was a tractor driver, so the family history is steeped in lifeboats and red cap. Is that what influenced you to decide to do this? Well, yeah, I was never on the crew, the lifeboat crew, but I've always been interested in the sea, I've been having fishing boats, and I just think, thought it was a nice thing to do to keep the family line going with the, uh, the lifeboats in red cap. Are you happy that it's finally finished now? Oh. Absolutely, yeah. It's been a sh shattering day and a shattering time, quite stressful, but we got there in the end, so yeah, more than a moment and, and very proud of it. But the lifeboats are working every day this year, not just in the days of yore. The oars have gone and now the engines pop, speeding through the raging waves. The courage is needed when they get to the sea.